Hello everyone. Um, in today's video, I'll be showing you how I shake the inks on the ET8550. Um, this is the question I've been getting a lot. How do I stir it? How do I shake it? Um, how do I agitate the inks? Um, so what I do is just shake the printer. Um, I have it on just a movable table and I'm just going to shake it like that. Um, and just, it will stir the inks in there. Um, another option is if I have my inks before I put it in, I could shake up the ink bottle just like that. Uh, and then the third option is actually removing the tank, uh, which I'll show you. Um, I'll, I'm not going to actually remove this one, um, but I have another. I'll clip. To, I'll clip the video in um, where I'll show you how to how I shake those tanks, but. Um, or what the tank looks like and how you shake it. All right, so I'm just shaking the ink up right here. Uh, I'm just shaking the ink tank up. And this is, you know, our ink tank. So I'm just shaking it up. Shaking it up. Shaking it up. So let's backside. And it's front side. Mm, kind of hard. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, I don't know. It's in there. That's pretty much it. What, or what I'm gonna do right now is just shake it so you guys can see the inks. Or I'll sh take you guys over to the printer. So right here at the printer. I'm just gonna rock it back and forth. Uh, I don't really have a time frame for how long I do this. I just kind of do it till I get bored. Um, so <laughs> it might be like ten seconds. It might be like a minute. But I shake it up. You can see the inks in there uh, moving in the tank, especially like yellow. Yellow is probably my best color. Um, Cyan is the only color that I tend to have issues with, um, so I do have to clean that one, that tank pretty often. But other than that, just stirring it up just like that. You know, get, get your rhythm going. I'm gonna let that close. Let me make sure you guys can see. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see the white moving. So if you can see the white, the white is moving in like this. Uh, inside the bottle, it's actually going in a circular motion. Yeah, we'll just do that. Alright. My printer was coming off. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, so let's go ahead and run it. That's why my just my stack um of sheets. I'm putting them in there. Now I just got the sheets loaded since I already, I already pre-taped them. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video uh, while it prints. Uh, as you can see, the color's there, white's there. Uh, this printer is just a little hard to film. But eventually I'll find a way to film it. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it's just gonna run through. Just go ahead and, uh, and then we'll be back once it's done, um, finished printing. 
also for those that are wondering um it took about either it, it was about uh 11 minutes roughly 10 10 to 11 minutes to print this whole whole sheet uh the image is 11 by 14 inches And to let it dry, just either you could just let it sit somewhere or um, I'll put mine on my heat press. It's probably dry enough to lift it. Usually you don't want to tilt it right after uh, if it's not dry because then the ink will leak. As you saw. Uh, Alright, so that's the design. That's the front. That's the back. Now let's go cure it. So now the ink's pretty it's it's pretty dry now, I would say. Um, next we'll come over here to the powdering station. And so I have my uh, DTF uh, Pro powder. What you do is you take the powder and you're just going to sprinkle it all around the design. Um, usually, depending on how big your design is, this is like a 11 by 14 uh, inch design that I printed. So, and once I sprinkle it on there, now we just go back and forth on the design, covering all all the uh, in, part of the images or part of the image with the powder. So make sure everything gets coated, all the ink is covered in powder. And then you want to do it like maybe once or twice, just to make sure it's fully coated. down um, I'm not sure if it'll make it easier to clean I don't think so but maybe it'll just easier to pick up and dump the excess powder so next what I'm doing is I'm warming up my heat press make sure you don't touch the design I just touch touch Now it's warm. I'm gonna bring the heat press down. We're as close as I can without touching the design. Um, and then also you wanna keep in mind, uh, the design will somewhat rise when you do, uh, when, it, uh, when it is cured. So uh, keep it just, just far enough so when it does rise, it doesn't touch me. Or it doesn't touch me. Also, the reason I'm holding my heat press is it's, uh, the top's a little uneven, so in order to get the design to cure uh, evenly, I just hold this, uh, this I have to hold this corner. Because if not, back side. Yeah. 
So now, if I can get it to focus on the light. You see that gloss, kind of, kind of like an orange peel. That's what you want. And then the very front of the design. All right, let's press this onto a shirt. I'm gonna use the shirt I'm wearing. This stuff isn't recommended, or uh, isn't uh, necessary, but I recommend it. Uh, it'll just produce better quality, um, like end results. If you just get all the way. So, once you let all right, roll after it, you let roll it, then you're gonna go ahead and just uh, pre-press the shirt just to remove any moisture. You can also okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put the design on the shirt and then press it. Um, I'm pressing for about 15 to 20 seconds. Cool. I'm gonna let the design cool. It's a cold peel. So once it's cool, we'll be back and then we'll just peel it. So this is the design. Close to the camera, I'll touch it. This hair could be a little darker. That's the only thing I see. Everything looks good. Um, color is good. It's a little white for you guys. Let me see if I can turn off these lights. The pink's not showing up as much on the camera. Cool. Right, so I'm gonna put the shirt back on. And that's the end of the video, guys. Thanks for watching.